<laughs> Did I scare you? I hope so. Well, here we are again with another review in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Hello again, everyone. I'm Joel, also known as the Big D, and this here's Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. And today, I bring to you Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors! I know... The folk, some of the guys want me to sing Dream Warriors, but this is all I'm going to draw because that little whispering chant of phrase coming and then doing the phrase back again, but like in the trailer. Yeah, that was my real big surprise. Hey, <laughs> got y'all, didn't I? Yep, okay, anyway. Now, although this is, well, my second fave of the franchise behind the original, just a little heads up before I do my ranking. If I'm spoiling that, I apologize. Anywho, but however, it's my favorite of all the, all the Nightmare sequels. The film was directed by Chuck Russell. It was released in 1987 and did pretty well, actually. Anyway, we of course have Robert England back as, you guessed it, old Freddy Krueger himself. Also, Harold Langenkamp returns as Nancy Thompson, the sole survivor of the original movie. Also, in the movie, there's also Patricia Arquette, Lawrence Fishburne, although he's credited as Larry Fishburne. Priscilla Pointer and Craig Watson. So anyway, here we go with what well with the story, but now I am gonna bring up most of the story, so if you have not seen the movie, I I will have to ask you to stop the video at once. Here's five seconds to stop. Okay, now, here we go, because uh, I'm sure a lot of you, I only wanted people to stop just in case, but I know lots of you horror fanatics have seen this, and consider that one, this one of your favorite nightmares, so, here we go. Now, we start with someone doing paper mache or something, what have you, creating the old Elm Street house that Nancy once lived in. And, well, it's our main protagonist, Kristen Parker, played by Patricia Arquette. And, apparently, she's trying to stay up late. And soon she starts having, like, having these coffee beans ground, already ground, and Diet Coke, boy. T boy, we're a combination, huh, folks? Double the caffeine. And then turns up Into the Fire by the band Dawkins, who also performed the Dream Warrior song, uh, which you'd hear at the end credits to the movie. Well, soon, after we get our cre opening credits, her mother, Elaine, comes in. She's not too thrilled. Yeah. So, she's just... Trying to be, well, a little bit respectful, getting attention from her mom, but unfortunately she's got a guest. Yeah, so. So soon Kristen goes to sleep and soon ends up outside the, the old Elm Street house. Where she sees a group of kids playing jump rope and singing phrase coming. Meets this little girl on the tricycle. She goes to fo follows her into the house, and and then soon when she tries to take her, the the boy or starts to come on and learns phrase um, and soon she manages to try to get away with that kid. But after being in so many traps, that and we hear that kid's voice like, "Put me down! You're hurting me!" And we just see a a skeleton char 
Charl charred or something like that. But anyway, she wakes up and soon she goes to her, her bathroom and Tracy so turns on the, the water faucet and soon it starts comes alive. She tries to pull it out and then Yara comes out with four claws like raised claw and slashes her. Her mother comes in and sees that Kristen slit her wrist. Yeah, with a razor blade. And so she faints and is soon taken to Weston Hills. And soon, that's where we get to see, um, well, one of our main characters, Dr. Neil Gorin, played by Craig Watson, and soon meet, is met with another doctor, uh, Dr. Sims. I can't remember her first name, though, but, and she's played by Priscilla Pointer. Most of y'all know her as Sue Snell's mother from the original Carrie which came out a decade before this. And, let's see. We get to meet some of the kids. Uh, now, of course, I'll, I'll mention about them in just a little bit. Of course, we have Orly Max, played by Lawrence Fishburne. Of course, he's credited as Larry Fishburne. And, of course, who, of course, was already big on TV's Pee Wee's Playhouse at the time, as he played Cowboy Curtis. Anyway, they're checking up on all their patients, and soon they learn that Kristen's there, and but soon she goes into a major panic when they when they try to sedate her, and soon she starts singing the last few words of "Phrase Coming," and then we see a familiar face appear, Nancy Thompson, and soon she gets to talk with Neil, and she's become the new staff at Weston Hills. So and. Soon, Dr. Gorin, well, Neil, sees a mysterious nun appear, a play by Nan Martin. Yes. It was kind of strange, though, but soon after that, Nancy gets to go on a tour of Weston Hills with Max. She introduces a her to a couple of the well patients there. First, there's Philip, played by Bradley Gregg, who actually he appeared in an episode or two of the final season of Silver Spoons. Yeah, I didn't know that until I went, until I saw them. Anyway, call him the Walker because he sleepwalks, and he creates marionettes. But they really have to be made out of they learn loud and I might know. Yeah, and then of course we meet the guy who, well, a guy we saw later in a, well, a big space with padded walls, the quiet room, and that's Kincaid, who is played by Ken Sagos, who was actually currently on TV's What's Happening Now, uh, you know, the sequel to the 70s series, What's Happening? Yeah, he was on there. Now, Kincaid's pretty much a real tough guy, he really kind of talks tough. And Max explains that he gets himself drawn in the quiet room so much that Nancy probably won't see much of him. He's like, yeah, I do it so I don't have to look at your ugly face all the time. It's like, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> so apparently, later on, Kristen soon, well, has another dream. Oh, yeah, but before this, uh, well, Neil is checking out something that Nancy had, and it was for a drug called Hypnosil. Yeah. And, well, he didn't think it was a good idea to use it for the patients. So, apparently, wasn't worth a go for. Kristen soon has a bit of a nightmare, and is trapped in Frey's place. Well, as... As soon as Nancy break, gets Kristen's stuff from her house, and apparently, let me see if I, oh yes, and soon Kristen, 
He is in the nightmare, and he's a big worm-like creature with right his head on it. She soon yells for Nancy, and soon Nancy hears something, wakes up, and she falls through her chair. It seems Kristen has a special kind of power. She can pull anyone into her dreams. Nancy grabs a sh the shard of glass and stabs it right into the head, spits out Kristen, and he sees Nancy. You, he, it says. She's shocked by it. And they manage to escape. Nancy wakes up with a cut on her hand. She soon brings in Kristen's creation and claims she used to live there. And, and well, Kristen tells her what, well, her dad used to do when she was a little girl. Yeah, make her feel better and what have you. Anyway... Soon, they have a bit of a meme with the rest of the crew, that which I've already mentioned, Philip, Kincaid, and Kristen, which Nancy's become well acquainted with. Now, we soon get to meet more of the others, even though we met them, some of those early on. Now, first up, when we didn't see at first, there's Will, this uh, geeky dude who is into like all that Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And he was, and he's in a chair, wheelchair, because he jumped off a roof. Yeah, her real band. Next, we meet Jennifer, who, well, apparently is trying to smoke a lot, use her cigarette burns to keep her awake, and what have you. And, well, as soon as she gets out of Weston Hills, she's going to go to... Hollywood and be on TV. King Kate's like, yeah, lifestyles of the rich and psychotic. Let's see, and and Joy, who, well, he's a shy guy and he doesn't really talk much. Let's see, and then we got Taryn, who is played by Jennifer Rubin, who a few years later would go on to star in the cult classic. Suspense Driller, The Crush, with Alicia Silverstone and Carrie Elwes. Yes, I almost didn't notice it was her until I did my research. So, they talk a bit, and, well, things go okay, and Nancy becomes a big help and becomes the newest member of the staff at Weston Hills. Now, while Nancy's having a bit of a, a little bit of a meal with Neil, it, that night, one of Philip's fathers comes to life and with a special animation becomes Freddy, jumps, cuts off the ropes and comes for him and appears. <laughs> Takes out his blank and one by one cuts Fill up right there, right there, right there, and there, right at his tendons, and pulls out those veins, and oh, that is for Ricky, and starts controlling him, and well, they don't know what's going on. Joy's on a little bit of pat watching patrol while Will's gone to sleep, so he sees what's going on. He rushes to wake him up, and he can't even believe it. He Tries to get help from one of the nurses, and apparently he can't do. Get gets help, grabs a tray and wipes the other, well, other patients' doors, and they rush to see what's going on. Freddy's control Philip, and then slashes off the veins, and Phil plummets to his doom after he's on the ledge of a window of a an old building, not too far away from the hospital. Yeah. Oh boy, it's serious. Weren't too thrilled with that and all. They have another group therapy, and well, they just think it was just a real suicide. <sighs> Kincaid gets all tore up and everything, as you can imagine, gets around the quiet room, and well, he's saying, ain't gonna dream no more. I can't really remember all of it, but oh boy, it, once he's finished, uh, with a look in his that on that face is kind of, I don't know, like priceless. Now, Jennifer is watching TV later that night. Max insists that she do something else, but if she gets caught after lights out, he's had it, but he manages to 
to lay, lay it slide because she couldn't handle the nightmare. So she turns it over and and Dick Cavett's on talking to Jean Jacques Gabor. Like, can I ask you something? And she's like, certainly. And soon we hear Fraser watch on. Man, I've been viciously and slashes through. Well, I don't know. We don't see it. The screen goes to fuzzy stackiness. And Jennifer uses the remote, tries to check channels, hits the TV, and it's in two big wire control. Arms kind of grab, and hands grab, and brings her up. Boy, and Frey's head comes up, and here comes the best. Killing best Frey one liner. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. <laughs> Welcome to prime time, bitch. And smashes her face, her head first right into the screen, killing her, and just gave her time, gave her her time to fry. <laughs> anyway. Let's see, a true Freddy classic never fails. <laughs> now, Nancy is aware of what's going on. She explains about Freddy and what happened to her years ago. And explains everything to the other survivors that are there. That they're the last of the Elm Street children. Will is kind of shocked. He's like, they never said, my parents never said anything about that. So apparently, Taryn isn't too thrilled either. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention what Taryn is. She used to be a junkie and also used to be in a juvie hall. Yeah, almost forgot that. My apologies, folks. <laughs> but she points that Kristen is the key to helping out. So, so Neil manages to put... Use a little bit of a little metal thing that kind of a pendulum to hypnotize them, put them into a deep sleep, and soon they would wake, possibly wake up, and Christian would bring them into the dream, but well, well, they couldn't do it, so everyone takes five. Joy's gonna drink water, and then he sees uh, this nurse, well, or a candy striper named Marcy, and wants him to follow her. So, anyway, and, and then there's a room with her, and she's just so attracted to him. So, anyway, Neil's playing with the little mail balls that click back and forth. Soon they break apart. He couldn't believe this. Will's like, we're here. Taryn's like, we're here. Kristen's like, we're in the dream. But Neil's kind of puzzled. They, they were still in the group. Now, but they were. Will manages to step up. He could stand, stand up. He can walk in his dreams. His legs are strong. In his dreams, he's the wizard master. Kristen proves she can do like an, a real cool acrobatic type move, a real cool flip. Really awesome. Yeah. And Kincaid is pretty darn strong, bends a chair's legs. Neil's like, Kincaid, please. That's very unnerving. And he's like, hey, check out Taryn. And Taryn's got this spiked hairdo dressed in black. Like, in my dreams, I'm beautiful. Clicked out a couple of uh, switchblade knives, like, and bad. And... Meanwhile, Joy is kind of getting attached to Marcy, yeah. and well, he unzips the matter suit, and well, I saw the television edit of, the, of this first, and then I saw the unedited version, of course, she's got a lingerie on, but and when I saw the unrated, well, not, <laughs> the theatrical cut, whoops, that's not unrated version, my mistake, and I'm getting carried away on this, we stare, and... Ooh. Sorry, well, sorry, folks, I have to bring this up. Nice. Marcy's got some real hot tits. Seriously. Starts laying on and then, but soon Joy realizes it's a trap and she starts pulling out the tongues real long, fires out, one's tongue at a time, tags it down, and, and then she just gives a Laughter, and soon we hear Frey's laugh, and he appears. It's like, what's wrong, Joy? Feeling tongue-tied? 
and his mattress falling straight into a fiery hole, and boy, Joy's trapped. Uh, Frey's trying to get him. Soon, <sighs> Dr. Sims comes in and wonders what's going on here, and uh, sees that Joy's out like a light on the floor, and he's in a coma. To make matters worse, the head of Weston Hills fire, well, re apparently wants Neil and Nancy to go pack up their stuff. <sighs> now, before I continue, there is something else I did, I never stopped to mention. That, um, Neil meets the strange nun again at Jennifer's funeral, and then again after after watching go what had just happened with him, he reveals about Freddy and her possibility of our identity. So anyway, Neil takes Nancy to see her dad, who is once again played by John Saxon, who apparently is now a security guard, but is apparently more drunk than ever, just won't, won't help, and, well, to make matters worse, when Neil contacts the hospital, Terry explains that Dr. Sims has got Kristen and has put her in the quiet room. So apparently... Nancy has a plan to go join the others and help save Kristen before Freddy does. And otherwise catch her. So our, so Neil tries to to get Tom Mr. Thompson to help out and find him because they had to find the remains of Freddy Krueger. So apparently Max then want Nancy to go see Kristen so she so he'll let them see the others in the TV room. So they go into the room for the therapy and starts the pendulum again. It's like that Joy is with Frey. If we don't act soon, Kristen will go in. Taryn's like, count me in. Me too, said Will. Now, pardon me for saying the strong language, because my, some of my videos aren't suitable for children. Kincaid's like, let's go kick the motherfucker's ass all over Dreamland. So, off they go after 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, they appear. But after trying to get their plans down, soon they are separating, and Kristen's back in her room again in a dream. And her mother turns off the radio again, which is playing into the fire, and... Well, tries to Kristen tries to talk to her, but here's the guy's voice calling for her, where's the burn? But it turns out soon phrase and this guy's slash her head off. I, just, I kinda don't like to see that because that's creepy and what have you. But Kristen escapes from Frey and soon then Terrence in her dream, she soon ends up in an alleyway and soon Frey encounters her. Welcome home, Terrence. Look familiar. Flicks out one of her knives like, okay, asshole, let's dance. And Frey goes for it and goes after her and but she gets Frey in the end. Like, why? Yes, we used to be old friends, you know. And soon all his fingers add into like big syringes, needles filled with, I don't know, heroin or something. He's like, let's get high. And these weird little mouth like things appear right here on both the Terrans' arms. Right, he's like, and boy, Terrence is doing like crazy. And so it looked like our varicose veins were like and Frey's just like what a rush. <laughs> With an evil grin. In another part, Will's looking for everyone, and soon Frey brings out a chair with spikes and all that stuff on it. Like, Will, you look tired. Have a seat. It's like, no thanks. I'm fine just the way I am. For now, maybe, Frey's like, saying, but when you wake up, it's back in the saddle. 
again. Then makes the chair go for him. It's man just scratching, laying, lose his balance. And then yells like, "It's the chair for you, kid!" But soon yells that he's the wizard master, and soon comes up and <laughs> zaps it and blows it up. Then he yells a chant in the name of Lorad Prince of Ales. Demon be gone, zaps him, but Frey's caught, but soon will start running up to him. Frey gets him, like, sorry, kid, I don't believe in fairy tales, and gets him. There goes another one. All right, now it's only, we only see Chris and Nancy Mia. Then the wall breaks, and Kincaid shows up, and they're happy to see him. And... So it's like, it's time to just find, Yo, Ray, where you hiding at? Uh, I kind of just don't want to say more language and what have you, so, okay? All right. Why don't you come and have a piece of meat? I knew he was a little chicken. Yeah. Felt like they should find the others first, but they didn't show up. A door appears. And Kincaid's like, but that door doesn't go anywhere. And Nancy's like, yes, it does. Are you ready? They go down to a fiery room. And soon they see Joy still tongue-tied over a fiery pit. Ray's like, Joy, look. All the little piggies come home. It's like, let them go, Kruger. And it's like, your wish is my command. And soon the tongues are letting go. Nancy rushes over and Kincaid helps. But soon, well, man, Nancy tries to stop him with an iron pole and stabs him. It's like he was not hurt. At all he pulls it out, looks off the blinds like, and Nancy's like, he's never been this strong before. And it's like, yes, the souls they give me my power. All the faces of the people he's killed. It's like, no. It's like, it's like, always room for more. But then he soon knows that something's going on. Because up in the, on Earth, we see, well, on the surface, we see, well, Thompson and Neil, well, getting him for the junkyard since Neil took one of Thompson's out, well liquor bottles and fill it up with holy water and take out cross from the church and they drive to the junkyard. That's where his the remains of Frey are there. They he manages to stop Thompson after he's leaving. You're about to attend a funeral that's long overdue. So they start working and soon they hear something. And the skeleton of Frey comes to life, defeats Thompson, throws him and impales him on a piece of metal, and then stops Neil, but doesn't really kill him, knocks him out. Throws him down and then disappears. Gives off a big line and disappears. And soon, in, in the last bit of the movie, they come into a room of mirrors, and Freddy appears one by in each mirror, dragging Nancy, Chris, and King Kane the one. Joy scared. After they're pulled in, Joy's like, No! Crash. Like, wow. Did I do that? King Kane's like, You found your dream power, man. Boy, Chris was pretty happy. <laughs> well, Nancy's like, It's over. Uh, they were happy and all. Soon, Nancy hears the voice of her dad, who come, whose spirit comes down. It's like, I've crossed over, princess. And tell him that he's sorry for everything. Loves her so much. Nancy hugs him, and Kristen's very happy. But Sully, it's, you guessed it, Freddy, seven right in the gut. Gotcha now. And girls are away, and Kristen makes moves for him. Frey's gun, like, you're mine now, little piggy. And Nancy quickly drops out. Frey and soon Neil hears everything. He pushes the bones in and everything. Uh, and 
throws holy water on him, saying some stuff, and then puts the cross on him. It starts flashing from spots, and then since starts being like, turn around, it's going around and around, and zap, and he's gone. Frey's defeated again. Kristen's hurt, like, won't let you die, she said to Nancy, but she passed away. Poor lass. They had the funeral at the end, and well, soon Neil sees the mysterious nun, and he arrives where she was last seen. It was Amanda Kruger. Yeah, Sister Mary Helena. It's like, oh my gosh, you were his mother. Yep. But anyway, then we see Neil going to sleep with the fix-up, well, Frey house, like, at the beginning. And he keeps one of Nancy, well, Nancy's, well, dream dolls. But soon we see the light and the little house come on. And then we fade out, and then Dream Warriors starts. Now, what did I think of Dream Warriors? I think it was good. It was it's my favorite of all the Nightmare sequels, and I absolutely love it. I love the performances we got from all the cast, including Patricia Arquette, who was absolutely great as Kristen. Harry Langenkamp was good. Uh, Craig Watson was good. Priscilla Pointer, Lawrence Fishburne, Rest the others, Bradley Gregg as Philip Kinsagos as Kincaid. And then, of course, there's the rest of the cast. Ronnie Eastman as Joy. Penelope Sudro as Jennifer. Jennifer Rubin as Taryn. Um, Ira Hayden as Will. And, of course, Nan Marin as Sister Mary Helena. Amanda Kruger, of course. John Saxon was pretty good, too. Now, then, the story is good. I like the lines, as you already heard I gave. And I hope you do like my Frey impressions. Because I hope this is why it boosts up my views. Anyway, would I recommend Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors to you? Hell yeah! You need to... On this movie, you can find this alone, or you can find it in the Nightmare on Elm Street 8 movie collection, which, of course, I got last month. And I think you're going to get a kick out of it. And, of course, I like the Dream Warriors song and Into the Fire, both of which were done by glam metal band. Well, maybe not metal, but, but glam rock band Dokken. Those are pretty good songs. So anyway, that's going to do it. This is probably the longest view I've done yet. And that will do it for my Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors review. Please feel free to let me know what you thought about in the comment section. Sorry I had to take the Freddy glove off. I was getting tired of it. But anyway, tell me what you thought about the movie in the comment section. Like and subscribe to my channel. And be a part of the Big D Nation! And thank you very much for watching. Join me again later tonight. Well, not later tonight. I'm, oops, I made a mistake. Join me tomorrow when I review Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master. Where it suddenly goes downhill for some of y'all. But for me, it's another fave of mine. I'll explain why. But anyway, thank you again for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.